In this next confrontation, I spar with another Hapkido instructor. Since most martial arts focus primarily in punching and kicking, flexibility, power and speed are absolute prerequisites for those arts. Observe that as soon as I go into a clinch, the Hapkido instructor is deprived of his main requirement, the distance to strike. All the years of training are useless now, as soon as the fight goes to the ground. Out of desperation, he even tries to reach for my groin. As he feels the pressure on the choke increasing around his neck, he briefly struggles, then taps out. He acted like he was going to continue the fight, but realized that from this position it would not be a good idea. He wants a rematch, and I immediately take him down. I establish the mounted position, which makes him extremely vulnerable. The main advantage of this position is that I can punch him, but he cannot punch me back. As he struggles in vain to push me out, he exposes his arm. I could get him on the arm lock, but instead I choose to choke him out for the second time. He tries to reach for the groin, but the pressure on the neck makes him quickly change his mind. Still not convinced, he asked for a third match. His opponent is having a difficult time comprehending that his strikes are not as effective as he thought. It is hard for him to accept the painful reality that all his years of training may be in vain. Perhaps he will never be able to understand what really happened, and what's worse, he might never consider incorporating jiu-jitsu into his training. Jiu-jitsu is the only self-defense system that effectively addresses ground grappling, the most important yet most neglected aspect of any real fight. Now the Hapkido instructor will be choked out for the third and final time. 